let's look at system design concept database sharding we will cover what why and how of it few strategies and end it with a real life example this is a very popular term in system design and you would have heard it a lot so let's understand what it is sharding is process of splitting data into smaller chunks or shards where each shard or chunk can be on different machine they can also be on same machine for purpose of example let's assume your data had four entries with these ids and names without sharding all of this will remain in one machine with database sharding you can potentially split it into two machines machine 1 and machine 2 in such a way that ids 1 and 2 reside in machine 1 ids 3 and 4 reside in machine 2 this way you have distributed your data from one machine to two machines but why is it needed when data may be too large to fit in single machines sometimes you have gbs or tbs of data and it may not be sufficient memory in a single machine to fit it so you are forced to shard your data it provides horizontal scaling of database sometimes you need it for the speed uh, for distributing processing of data with shard the distributed processing becomes easier but it is a complex solution you should use it only if it is needed so how is it achieved there are two ways to achieve sharding the first is application level shard where your application will include a db client database client and in that database client you route to different shards of data for example you may say that range 1 to 10 go to shard 1 range 10 to 20 go to shard 2 so on the logic resides in your application client but not in the database the other example can be database level sharding nowadays lot of databases come with inbuilt support of sharding here there can be routers or there can there are multiple other ways of achieving it the ss ss being the app will call the database and from database it will know which shard to pick so the difference between at what layer the routing happens in application level the routing happens at application for database level the routing happens at the database layer so what are the common sharding strategies the most common sharding strategy is hashing in hashing you find the you first define a shard key you compute a hash of it and each chunk or shard of data is assigned on basis of hash shard key range because we are taking hashes so the data which for shard keys which are closer typically doesn't reside in the same machine the pros is the data is evenly distributed for different keys the other common strategy is the ranges is similar to the hashing but instead of creating a hash of it we directly find the ranges for the shard keys here like the shard keys which are close typically reside in the same machine the pros is it allows for targeted operations now let's look at a real world example to understand this let's say you want to shard data of orders for users in a e-commerce site the order data has order id it will also have user id date status and other order details like products payment details etc so how we can shard it take few seconds to think about it feel free to pause the video if you want to think about it more 
the sharding can be on basis of order id or user id i'll possibly shard it on user id because it will help in co-locating data for other uh, other entities as well maybe for payments or tracking history the sharding strategy can be hashing or range i'll probably use hashing because in this particular scenario the newer users may have tendency to order more than the older users or you don't know how they will behave so it's better to hash it for uniform distribution so the databases which have sharding support are cassandra hbase there are other databases like mongo aerospike and there are ton of examples but these are the two most popular database for with sharding support this is just the tip of the iceberg there are a lot of concepts in it so some further readings can be on hotspotting hotspotting is when the data is unevenly distributed for example one key can have large amount of data for social network the celebrities sometimes have 100 million followers or they have large number of tweets or large number of comments which may if all celebrities end up in one shard somehow it may lead to unevenness of data so hotspotting is a one pretty common issue the other is redistribution of data let's say you add a new machine in the cluster or your existing machine goes down then the data needs to be redistributed this is a very complex process again it's a good concept to read about the third is network partition so let's say you have a you are using some db level sharding there are three machines in the cluster and all three machines are up but somehow due to network partition they can't talk to each other so in this case they will all try to serve data to the users which may lead to inconsistencies this was an overview of database sharding concepts and hopefully we will have more follow up videos on it thank you